I have a dream, that's all I need I'll make it happen with some work and belief Hey you guys, welcome back to my podcast. I have a special guest. Her name is Layla. She's going to share with you a little more about her, but today we're going to be talking about body positivity and she's going to be sharing with you her experience with body positivity because our theme for this month is thankfulness. And so thankfulness around the body is what we're going to talk about today. So Layla, how are you doing today, girl? I'm great. Thank you, Shunda, for having me today in your podcast. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> so I'm so happy to have you here and to share with us. Yep, y'all, she is from Canada. Well, she's living in Canada. She's not from Canada, um, but she's in Canada. You want to tell them what part of Canada you're from? Uh, I live in Montreal, <laughs> Quebec. Uh, it's the French part of Canada. Uh, I'm trying to learn the French, and it's hard, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Uh, but uh, originally, I come from Saudi Arabia. So she's a sweet lady. I met her um, through a Facebook group. And so ever since we have been connecting, meeting once a week on Zoom, sharing things with each other and connecting. So um, I'm so glad to finally have you on my podcast to share with everyone today. So can you share with me today a little bit about yourself in my audience so we can get to know you? Absolutely. Uh, as I said, I uh, come from Saudi Arabia. I come uh, from a conservative background. I came to Canada to study uh, for my PhD and I did PhD in medical neuroscience. And it was coming to Canada was what was life changing for me. My life back in Saudi was uh, difficult. I don't know if people know about Saudi uh, a little bit. Uh, it's it's been changing now, but in general, it's been uh, it, like it's a very male-dominated society. Um, as a woman, I did not have any role uh, there and no recognition. And there was there was a lot of negative talk uh, to mm. me as a woman uh, for us in general as a woman. So coming to Canada changed me, or I had to change myself, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I f after I finished my uh, PhD, uh, then I decided that I really want to use my experience. Uh, I've been through a lot of challenges. I've been changing a lot. Uh, growth mindset about my body, about my... Uh, personal image about uh, change in society and the way I think uh, and that's when I started uh, my uh, business as a coach uh, whole essence uh, awareness intelligence coach wow so that's a little bit about me well for the ones who might not understand what that means <laughs> can you <Yes>. share <laughs> go in depth with what that means because when people hear this they're like oh okay but I don't yes. know what it is <laughs> yes. So, so share more with, absolutely, with my audience absolutely. about what is happening. Thank exactly you mean. for asking, actually. I, I usually say the word, like, you know, I throw the, uh, the bomb, right? <laughs> and, I, and I see if people want to know about it or not. Um, so holescence is a word I came up with, actually. It's a term I came up with, and uh, it means in the process of becoming whole. Wow. Uh, because in my journey, uh, my personal journey to becoming myself, I found that I was rejecting myself. I was rejecting my inner person, was, was rejecting my body, my, my personal image, how I looked, my, how my body looked. I didn't care about myself. I didn't take care of who I was and living was really difficult for me at one point. So I needed to work on that. I needed to become a whole person to get to know who I am, to decide who I am. Because at one point I didn't know who I was since like I was told since I was a child what to be, right? And then mm -hmm. at one point I decided that's not what I want to be. And then now I needed to find who I am. Yeah. So that's what holescence is. And awareness intelligence basically is how you use your awareness, your self-awareness and the awareness of your surrounding in an in a intelligent way or in a good way where it will benefit you, right? So uh, there are things that I've learned also from my experience about, let's say, uh, we are going to talk today about body image, is uh, how, how, how do I use my awareness about my body? Uh, how, how, do, how do I 
connect with it? What does it tell me when it is, let's say, aching, when it is uh, not feeling well, uh, when I'm eating food? What food is good for me? What food is not good? I went, like I tried several diets, uh, and one of the things that was very difficult for me for a while was eating. I hated wow. eating because... Um, that was one of the things, you know, I, I come f uh, from a big family and I had, I have uh, older sisters where they were also sort of negatively talking about their body image and they were told like, you know, don't get fat, uh, don't, you'll look ugly, blah, blah, blah. And then they transferred that to me. Wow. So I was feeling like I'm fat and I was like scared, scared of food. Like I would eat just, you know, maybe some cheese and bread during the day says to keep me going, but um, I love sweets. I love desserts. I love chocolate. <laughs> and it's like, as I go, when I eat it, I feel so guilty. It feels like as if now that's going to translate immediately and make me like look huge or whatever, right? And I hated looking at myself in the mirror. Wow. Uh, so, so I needed to bring my awareness to that, really. Wow. So can you share like how you celebrate your body image, like how you practice self-care, how do you celebrate it? And like kind of what did you start doing um, so that when you do have chocolate, you don't feel, ups you know, <laughs> bad about eating it. You like, I can have a piece of chocolate, but you know, how did, how did you start from going from there to going from where you are now where eating, you're okay with eating now? Oh yeah, absolutely. I love eating. I, I mean, I discovered I love eating, <laughs> and it's it's one of the and it's one of the um, how how to say it? it's one of the uh, blessings we have, right? There mm -hmm. are people who cannot eat, and mm -hmm. here I have the food, and I'm rejecting the food just because I'm afraid of it, right? So basically, the first thing I needed to do is to love myself. Yeah, is to accept who I am, and I started by. Uh, like doing something I would never do is to wow. take really care of myself. When I look at myself in the mirror, I would start saying, I love you. <laughs> and I look <laughs> at myself in, the, in, the, in my eyes, you know, I was like, I love you. <laughs> it sounded so weird at the <laughs> beginning for, but I had to do it. And every time I would go to the mirror in the bathroom or whatever, I, I find a mirror, I will, I made it sort of a ritual. I look at the mirror you are beautiful. I love you. Wow. <laughs> you are perfect the way you are. I love you. So uh, after, after a while, I, I sort of got used to it. It, it wasn't as, as uncomfortable as it was <laughs> at the beginning. And then I started to, uh, I, I, I went through different diets, right? It's okay. like, I, I had uh, a lot of uh, problems, uh, like, the irritable bowel, bowel syndrome so I was feeling bloated I didn't know what what type of food I could eat so I tried FODMAP um, I tried to uh, and I had also iron deficiency a very severe wow. iron deficiency okay. um, <clears throat> so I tried to uh, have um, a lot of uh, vegetables that are you know because I didn't want to eat a lot of meat um, but then uh, I tried, uh, I don't know if you heard about the um, lectin diet, I yeah. tried the, the keto <laughs> diet, I tried many, many of these diets. And what I found is for my body, uh, I started listening. I mean, mm -hmm. with all these diets, it didn't work for me completely, but I've learned that uh, with the lectin diet, for example, I learned that cucumber, even though Usually I would eat it and feel comfortable eating because, you know, it doesn't have any calories, right? <laughs> it's <Yeah>. just water. <laughs> it wasn't good for me. It would make wow. me feel uh, bloated, for example. Um, cauliflower, um, the uh, broccoli, the broccoli, the, the heads, I'm okay mm -hmm. with them. The stalks, they give me bloating. So wow. with all of that, I was sort of getting to know what is good for me and what is not. Uh, with the keto diet, for example, I went uh, into very, very strict keto diet and I lost a lot of weight. And then I discovered when I looked at my pictures and how I felt about it, I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like this is who I want to be. 
uh, yeah, losing weight. I'm like, oh, I'm thin. I'm like, you know, these uh, supermodels, or I want to be because I'm not that tall. <laughs> but but it really didn't resonate. I I didn't have enough um, energy, you know. So, but I learned from the keto diet that too much carb made me feel very tired and wow. gave me a lot of headaches. So now I know that if I eat, let's say, a certain amount of carbs, well, I'm a researcher because I've studied also and I've, <laughs> I've been researching. So I do research my food. I calculate how much food. And, and I've learned that around, you know, 20% carbs of my diet is okay. It's going to wow. give me like the carb I can have without being too tired, too much headaches, uh, migraines especially, but at the same time, I can have the things that I like. I, I used to love bread, but I found also bread was giving me a lot of bloating. Wow. Um, so, so all these diets, I've learned from each one of them something. And also I've learned in my, for my body personally, um, is that with the iron deficiency, I needed to eat uh, red meat. Wow. I, I used not to eat, eat that much. I didn't like it as much, but now I try to incorporate it into my diet uh, often. And I notice when I am very, for example, low, I know that I'm, my breath, uh, I'm short in breath. That's when I know that my iron is, is low or I'm dizzy. So then I sort of uh, uptake uh, or up the intake of, uh, of the red meat, uh, different types of red meat and different types of vegetables that are high in, in iron. Uh -huh. um, so that's what I have uh, been doing. And I, I find it very uh, gratifying to okay. be able to <laughs> eat and enjoy food. And sometimes, yeah, I, I and, and especially the negative talking, right, to, to self. Uh -huh. Like whenever I eat something that is not good for me, and I was like, oh, my God, how could you do this? Uh, you know, you are going to get, I don't know, ugly. You're going to get this and you're going to get that. And I was yeah. like, calm down, girl. <laughs> <laughs> For me now, it became more of even if I eat one day, let's say uh, extra chocolate or even I eat chips sometimes, I'm, I'm, this is my day okay, let's say I'm, I'm not, in the, not in the mood of eating healthy. I ate healthy all the day, but I feel like binging. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to binge, but I know that the next day and the day after and the day after I'm eating healthy. So mm -hmm. it's more of a balance, how I'm living my life without um, forcing myself or being afraid of food, mm -hmm. but enjoying it and being okay with me sometimes sort of fall, falling short uh, of, of being, you know, healthy or um, wanting to, to be, uh, you know, just, just into, into the chocolate or whatever. So <laughs> this way I, I, can, uh, I can enjoy it more. And in a full time, it's a balance, how yes. I'm balancing uh, my life and uh, for my body. And uh, of course, I always exercise, at least walk. You know, yeah. that's, that's a, at least something I need to do 30 minutes a day, every day, I have to walk, uh, sometimes more, sometimes, but, but the minimum is, is the 30 minutes, I need to do uh, that. Oh, that's cool. And that is called mindfulness. Because when is, you're, yes. Because you self aware, of, you know, and you've been mindful of your actions, because it's nothing wrong with eating, you know, something bad. But in those moments, you're mindful of what happened. Exactly. And so that's how you're able to say, okay, I, I know what I'm about to do. I know I'm about to binge. But for the next few days, I know I'm going to eat healthy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because I know I got to balance this out. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and I call it awareness intelligence because uh, like it's part of my mindfulness, but also part is like what choices I have. Right. Mm -hmm. What are the choices I'm making and the consequences of my choices? Now, if I'm eating, if I'm binging every day, then and I'm saying to myself, oh, it's OK, I'm going to eat next month uh, healthy. 
then I'm, I'm really hurting myself here, right? Because binging is not about only, let's say, gaining weight or, or it, it just doesn't feel good. It just doesn't, it doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, it's okay to do it from time to time. Uh, but then you need to, we need to find our, or fine tune our choices with the consequences we are able to take. Yeah. When I was not eating, the consequences are that I have very poor health. I wasn't able to focus. I wasn't able to do anything, but I was staying slim and that didn't even look healthy at all. So now I'm, I'm sort of in a way uh, balancing my, my, my body weight that I don't go even below. I like, I became, or I choose not to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I choose not to gain it, but I choose not to lose it. So I'm very happy with the medium I am in right now. And that's, that's where my, I need to keep my awareness there and be mindful. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you got your maintenance weight. In a way yes, you yes, yes. I was like, when I look at my face, I'm w with this weight, I was like, oh, I love how I look. <laughs> <laughs> you are beautiful. So, and, and I keep telling myself that, you know, so I, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, start talking bad to myself again, you know. <laughs> that's, and that's good. I call that, I like to get my clients to do that. I told them it's the mirror exercise and they have so much trouble with the women's exercise I know. because no one wants to look in the mirror. First of all, it feels awkward. It, it does. And then you're like, is anybody all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let alone telling yourself i love you yeah they're like uh, what is going on you in a you know in a public bathroom you in a mirror mm -hmm. like i love you um are you talking to me um no myself <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i don't i think that's why we struggle with telling ourselves compliments and mm -hmm. we're we're easy to give it out to everybody else we say girl you look cute and all this stuff but when it comes to ourselves you know, that's something that I try to get them to work on like all the time because loving yourself is real important. This helps you go out and achieve the goals you want in life. Yes, absolutely. But it starts with loving yourself because you got to have the confidence to, yeah. to go out there and do it. And, and when, with, with that point, actually, it's very funny in, in my case, at least, that when I was not loving myself, even when somebody gives me a compliment, I don't believe them. I keep mm -hmm. thinking it's like, are they sort of pitying me? Are they like just being nice because, you know, they don't, they don't want to say you're ugly, right? Because I was seeing myself as ugly. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, and that's what I discovered also, no matter what other people say, no matter how much they give you compliments, if you are not loving yourself, if you are not convinced that you are worthy and you're beautiful, the way you are, nothing will convince you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's why you got to convince yourself. Yes. Um, definitely. I definitely agree with that. That's, that's something that I used to question. I'm like, me being cute, me, yeah. <laughs> whatever. You just being yeah. nice. Exactly. I'm not, I look a hot and then you start like putting yourself down. You start saying, yes. Oh, this shirt, this is just a little old t-shirt I just put on or, yes. oh, these yes. shoes are old. Like, no, just, just take the compliment believe it is, is yes. you and accept it as you and so yeah that's very important um we can't make someone believe they're beautiful they have to believe it themselves absolutely i agree so how do you think this changed your coaching business oh uh changed it a lot because first of all i feel i personally feel that to coach someone i need to sort of know the experience they are going through Mm -hmm. Even if it's not exactly the same, it will never be the same. Each person have their own unique experience, their own unique, unique feelings. But to, to have gone through that myself gives me the credibility. And, and that's what I find with my client as well. They like it because they feel that, oh, you've been through that. The other thing is I always share with them my experience, how I was and how I am now, because Funny enough, now people, for example, my clients or a lot of people, they say like, oh my God, you are so confident. You are <laughs> this, you are that, and, and you are beautiful, you are. And I was like, yeah, thank you, thank you. And I'm smiling. But then when I share with my clients, I needed to work on that. This is, mm -hmm. this didn't, like, I wasn't born this way, or even <laughs> if I was, like, it was sort of 
programmed in a, in a bad way and now I needed to work on it. And the, the, the interesting part, at least in my case, I find is that the old habits, uh, the old programming will keep coming back, right? Like mm -hmm. it, no matter how much I tell myself uh, I'm beautiful, I love myself, sometimes when I'm in the, in the trenches or when I'm not feeling well, it comes back again to me. And when I look at myself in the mirror, I was like, oh my God, I cannot look at you, right? And then I need to remember that's when I'm using my awareness, being mindful. No, even if I am not seeing myself as good now, I am still beautiful. And then I stand proud and stand tall and smile and, 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 and continue. So that is also something I tell to my client. Wow. You will face these difficulties. It will come back to you. And it is very important to know, even if you fall 10 times, like let's say nine times out of 10 trials, as long as you are standing up and trying again, it's going to get easier. Next time you are going to fall eight times out of 10, then seven times, then mm -hmm. maybe one, like until you <laughs> reach one and you keep falling this one, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. So I have a few more questions. What is something that you can share with my audience to help them love themselves, like their whole body, their body image? What is something you feel like they can start practicing today? Um, to share love to their body. <laughs> uh, well, of course, I mean, uh, you, you tell them already to look at themselves and love themselves. And I would say, um, look at it this way. Uh, you and your body, you are the one who has been, let's say you have been through a lot of problems, right? Who has been your true friend so far? Who has been carrying you uh, through all these issues who have been taking care of you and, and making you move from one place to another, think, eat, do, it's your body, it's you. So you are your best friend, but you need to be best friend to you, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, uh, and that's one of the realizations I had uh, when I, before I started telling myself I, I love myself, I discovered that, what did I do? Like, I, I was asking myself the question, what did I do to hate myself this, this much, right? Wow. To think that I am bad. I didn't do anything that was seriously bad to anyone. And this body that I am rejecting, that I'm, uh, you know, uh, caring about how other people think of me, is the only thing that has been my loyal friend right mm -hmm. nobody was loyal to me as much as this body and the self so why am I treating it this way does it deserve no it doesn't mm -hmm. if I want to be kind to others how about being kind to myself and if I start loving myself and feel confident and happy then people will like me anyway right yeah. <laughs> and if they don't, it's okay. <laughs> I know not everybody, I mean, I cannot please everyone. So no. <laughs> the ones who are going to like me, they are the ones who sort of resonate with me and I can't be myself with them. And the, the ones that they don't like me, it's okay. I don't have to be around them. And that's it. So, so think of your body and yourself as your best friend and be and they are your loyal friends. So be loyal and, and be good to them. So wow. that they can keep being your best friends. I like that. I really do. Thank you. <laughs> and you I like well. it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So lastly, what inspires you or makes you get up every day to do what you do? Um, so <laughs> that's another thing I would say uh, for a long time. I, I was I was sort of because I was depressed. I had a lot of difficulties, uh, a lot of self uh, sort of hatred and rejection, and and I wished almost every day I would sleep wishing to die and wake wow. up. I was like, oh my god, I have to face another day. And then when I started uh, changing that, when I started being happy from within, when I started living, and started feeling that. I want to use this experience. As long as I'm learning from my experience something, 
from the challenge, it's, a, it's an experience worth living. The other thing is, if I can share it with other people, if I can make them feel I want to live another day, then it's also another uh, reason to, to be worth living. And because now I'm happy and I feel that I have a purpose, I feel life is worth living and death will come whenever mm -hmm. it wants, right? So, so rather than wasting my life, wishing that I do not exist and hating myself, I want to live happy, make others or, or share with others this happiness, try to help them to live happy. And then when the time comes, I'll be going happy, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not uh, how to say, uh, the, whole, the, the worst thing for me is to regret mm -hmm. not doing something, right? So now I wake up, knowing that I want to do something and I'm putting my best efforts there, which is to, to live happy, to be peaceful, to love myself, appreciate this life that was given to me as a gift and this body uh, and the soul and try to do my best for the world before I leave it. Yeah. Wow, that is good. Oh, you guys, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this episode and this podcast with you today. I appreciate you for coming on. And I'm going to share in the comments below how you can find her on social media. She's on Facebook, LinkedIn. Are you on any other places on Layla? Uh, I have on Instagram. I'm starting right now. Yeah. Uh, not, not yet, but they can find me on Instagram. And I opened another a Twitter account, uh, they can find me there. But I would say LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook are the most that I am around. At. Okay. And then you have a website you want me to send them to. I can also put that in the comments below so you can learn more about what she do. She offers coaching. And so if you want to learn more about her coaching, you can reach out to her. So I also include her website in the comments below. But I appreciate you guys for tuning in today. And I hope this podcast has been inspiring. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for having me and live your life, uh, a happy life and love yourself. <laughs> Bye. I have a dream. That's all I need. I'll make it happen with some work and belief. Know what I want.